It's now time for the GCN Tech Clinic. In this video, we pick out the questions that you've been submitting in the comments section underneath previous tech clinics, then we'll answer them as best we can. This week, we've got Connor Dunn in uh, for Ollie. How yep. are we doing? I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Let's crack on first with question. the first question. Go this on, has been sent in by Mihailo Mitrovic. I hopefully yeah. you pronounced your name right there. Um, thanks for sending this one in. He said, hey folks, I'm aiming to modernize an old steel bike and I'm wondering whether there is any theoretical chance for a down tube shift and lever to work with a modern rear derailleur. No specific model, just generally. I kind of fell in love with the simplicity of the system, but at the same time, I would like to be able to run free hub and have a wider gear range. Thanks in advance for the reply. Mm. Um, yes, I think this could work. If you want to use a down tube shifter on a modern mech, you're going to need to use a non-indexed shifter or a friction shifter. And you're just going to have to be careful because the, a modern rear derailleur is going to be like 9, 10 speeds, for example. So the, sh the difference between the sprockers is quite small. Um, down tube shifters were designed when you're talking like 6, 7 speeds. So, and in terms of the cable pull rate, you just need to basically make sure that the amount of cable that the down tube shifter can pull through and release is enough to be in line with the amount of cable pull to go from the small sprocket to the largest sprocket, effectively. Do you agree? <laughs> I agree, yeah. yeah. Yeah, great point. Although I'd counter that by saying I'm not a fan of, of down tube shifters. Me neither. Um, and I don't know. You'd have to use an old style bike, so you can't just fit down tube shifters to any bike, can you? So. It's just a pain because you have to reach down and you know, it's easier to have them in there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm inclined, their own, I'm inclined to, to say own. it will work, so there we go. Um, next question is from Paul Chua. Chua? Chua? Says, can you fit a mechanical group set on a frame set that was previously had DI2 on it? A bit of Googling suggests it's only possible if the frame has cable stops what a cable stops for, and is there an alternative to run a mechanical group set on a DI2 frame set? What do well, you think on this? Simple answer, I'd say, is no. Yeah. Um, as you've stated, there are no cable stops, and there's going to be, you know, it's unlikely to have enough space to get the cabling into the frame yeah. out again. Um, you could get round this by potentially, you know, putting outers the whole way down. Oh, good suggestion, and yeah. Zip tying it on. It's going to look a little bit messy, mm. it would work. Um, but in terms of like having a, a sort of factory fit option, so you know, neat and tidy, all installed in the frame, you're really going to struggle. The cable stops are the ends that are manufactured into the frame where the outer housing stops and then you just have inner cable. And if your bike's designed only to be using DI2 cables, they're teeny tiny compared to outer gear cables. You're just not going to have space to fit it all in there. There you go. Next question by Will Patska. Um, hey guys, got my first puncture on my road bike recently, first in three years. Wow, that's a good going. I yeah. noticed that the tyre, the GP5000s from Continental, much easier to work with when I swapped out the tyres a few months back. Does the rubber heat up and become more malleable while cycling? I know F1 tyres need to be heated for proper grip, but does that occur at cycling speeds too? Well, yes, as you ride, your tyres do get a little bit warm, but we're talking a minuscule change here, certainly in comparison to, say, Formula One or motorsport, where they're heating their tyres up to an incredibly high temperature to get them to work. But in terms of the difference that it's going to make when you're trying to mount or dismount the tyres, yeah, I think it will make a little bit of a difference. Yeah. I think a lot of it's coming from the fact of when you are installed a new tyre, it's just out of the packet, it's not been in installed and stretched ever so slightly. But if you're struggling with the tyre because it feels um, like quite rigid and tough to move, just bring all the stuff indoors, get it into the kitchen, get it warmed up, life will be a little bit easier. Yeah, it does make it easier. Mm. Sometimes I think it's almost about just having warm hands. Yeah. If you have cold hands, it is a nightmare to get tyres on. I've always got cold hands, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's and talking about the cold, the actually, it's the complete opposite um, in winter time. So if the tyre is quite cold, it can the rubber will go quite, not brittle, but quite tough. So um, yeah, warm your tyres up would be a lot easier. Next, Next question. question. Do you want to read this one out? Yeah, you yeah, go, go for it. So this is from Cherry... Cherry Agana? Would you agree with that? Cherry Agana? Cherry... Cherry Agana? Yeah, so. all right. So they're saying, I'm using Muckoff tubeless sealant, and when I'm riding through the rain, I see that small punctures that were previously sealed are now slightly bleeding the pink sealant. Is this normal? And will it mean I have to refill my sealant faster than normal? Or is it that the new punctures are having trouble getting sealed when I'm riding in the rain? I think I've seen this before. Um, yeah. So the water is stopping the sealant um, from drying out as effectively as it would do yeah. in the dry, hence the reason you're seeing a bit of seepage coming out yeah. through the tyres. 
Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be a significant amount, though, would you reckon? No, I don't think it's going to be a significant amount. The main part of the sealant, which is plugging up the hole, are the small little particles that are suspended in the tubeless sealant. That will do its job of plugging up the hole. And you might just find that the puncture site is too big for the sealant to work effectively. Um, there you go. But, as we've mentioned, basically, tubeless sealant in the dry works slightly better than it does in the wet. Simple yeah. answer. And I don't think it's going to be a significant amount that you need to top the tubeless sealant up. It's ever such small. There we go. Next question by Fleur de Lispens. Um, in the six months or so I've been riding clipless, my shoes have shed four cleat screws. What? I've tried blue Loctite, but my SPD sandals still managed to lose a screw. What gives? Should I go red? Um, fair play using SPD sandals. Presumably they're riding in warm climates. Yeah. Your feet would freeze to death here in the UK. But this does sound unusual to me. I can't say I've heard of that being a recurring problem. I've heard of cleat bolts coming loose now and again. But I think the advice I would give here would be to almost start afresh with everything. So take it all apart, clean it all thoroughly, make sure there's no dirt and grease left on any of the threads, and then I would use a Loctite again. I think blue Loctite should be perfectly fine. The red Loctite is a little bit stronger. But I think part of the issue is that the Loctite hasn't set correctly when they first use it because there might be a bit of grease in there on the thread, which okay. stops it from drying out. So reinstall it all back together, torque it up correctly, yeah. and then I think you should be good to go. Yeah, you get them nice and tight, 8 yeah. to 10 Newton meters. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably a good starting point. Lots of different shoes or pedal systems will probably have a torque set specific for them, but that's kind of in the region where you want to aim at. Simple. There you go. Next question. Do you want to read the next one? Out, yeah, Alex? it's from Regis B. Oliveira. They say, hi GCN crew, best upgrade, is it carbon wheels or electronic shifting? Currently running Shimano 105 R7020 group set with stock aluminium wheels, which are DT Swiss R470 rims. The budget is around 1200 US dollars. Thanks. What do you think? I go carbon wheels. Would you? I yeah. Go carbon I'd wheels. be inclined to agree. Although, what I do want to say is it really depends on what people define as best. Yes. Yeah. Because if you want the best in terms of ease of shifting, then carbon wheels aren't going to change anything for you there. But if you want to go fast, carbon wheels are going to be the answer. But if you want to have silky smooth operating gears, you want to change the feeling of your bike, then I think the group set could be the answer. Yeah, it's like the feeling of having carbon wheels, light wheels, they're responsive. Yeah, a nice yeah. sound. I mean, oh, we love yeah. the sound. Um, yeah, it's that little bit more enjoyment to ride. Yeah, I think. Hybrid. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you on that. Carbon wheels would be what I would personally do. But if you want to change the riding experience that you get through just the general use of your bike, and you don't want to try and go any faster, then I think. A modern electronic group set would make a huge difference to the feeling that you get when you're using your bike. Because it yeah, is pretty definitely. cool tapping the buttons and hearing the front derailleur go. Like, bzz, bzz. Yeah, super smooth and, and quick as well. I that think. said, actually, yeah. if you do upgrade your wheels, try to make sure your budget includes a set of nice tyres and inner tubes or go tubeless if you like, because that'll make a big difference as well. Yeah, for hmm. sure, for sure. Next question, this one's been sent in by Too Old For This. Great, <laughs> great username. Hi Tech Gurus, uh, I upgraded my Giant Defy Pro to Fancy Pants Carbon Wheels. Yeah. Uh, and thanks to Alex's advice, moved to tubeless tyres. With winter coming, should I put alloy wheels on to protect my fancy pants? And <laughs> second question, do you recommend going with tubes through the northern winter? Thanks for the great shows. Um, I don't think you need to change out your nice Fancy Pants wheels, as I often call them, in winter time, because disc brake wheels, yeah. um, when you're braking, it isn't wearing the braking surface out because it's contained onto the disc road. So the sort of thought process of not using your best wheels in winter is really like a rim brake yeah. tradition because yeah, sure. they're going to gradually wear them away. And you inclined to agree with that? Yeah, I'd agree. Mm -hmm. I used to use a pair of wheels every winter. I used to get a Jeep yeah. pair at the start of the winter. By the end, the rims would be done. Um, and in terms of, would we say, running tubes or tubeless in winter, um, I think we all know I'm a big fan of tubeless. Yeah, tubeless, definitely. Yeah, there's nothing more frustrating than being stood at the roadside with a puncture, especially if it's just a small little, a tiny little bit of grit that's just gone through the tyre and punctured the inner tube, where nine times out of ten, tubeless would have just sealed it up. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, potentially think about opting for more puncture-proof tyres, though, for the winter. That's Save good one any time you're stopping in the cold. The grit, stones, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Wet roads all the time. 
makes for great yeah. chance for puncture. So yeah. Good advice there, Connor. Right, on to our last question for this week. It's from Roger Furness. They say, hi tech team, the lower bottle cage fixing point on my aluminium frame seat tube is loose and rattles. Is there a simple repair procedure? Yeah, there is. Yeah, so on aluminium frames, they are riv nuts, kind of yeah. like a rivet. Yeah, it's like crushed in place. Yeah, that's right. So I think most bike shops or frame repair places will have the tools to install these in the first place, but you might just be able to tighten it up using the tool. Keep the one that you've got in there and that'll stop it rattling around. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if it needs replacing, then it's a case of carefully drilling it out, getting the new riv nut inserted and crushed into the frame correctly. There you go. Simple. Hope that helps you out. Hope we've answered everyone's questions. Once again, apologies if we haven't, but fingers crossed we'll get some next week. Yeah. Mm. Thanks, everyone. See ya.